If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and attempt to answer this question on your own first before listening on. The question gives us the value of the astronaut's angular displacement according to this equation right here. And in part A, in order to determine the angular velocity, we're going to have to differentiate this equation with respect to time. Let's take a look at the equation that dictates that process. And so we have the Greek letter omega representing the angular velocity, and then we can see that we have to compute the derivative of the angular displacement with respect to time. So let's write down the expression for the angular displacement, and then we're going to determine the derivative of this in order to get the angular velocity. So we could write the left-hand side as d theta dt. That simply represents the derivative of the angular displacement with respect to time. And then we have to apply a simple power rule in order to calculate the right-hand side. So in that rule, we move the exponent down and multiply by the coefficient. So of course, 2 times 0 0.30 gives us 0 0.60. We have the variable t, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So we'll end up with t to the first power. So this gives us the magnitude of the angular velocity. We can replace d theta dt with omega, again, according to the equation above. And then since the question states that the time is five seconds, we simply have to plug in five seconds for t. And so when we do that, we end up with 3.0 radians per second is the standard unit for the angular velocity. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Now for part B to determine the linear velocity, we simply have to use the following equation where the linear velocity V is equal to the radius of the astronaut's path multiplied by the angular velocity, which we just determined. Now the question notes that the radius is 10 meters, so we can plug in 10 meters for that radius. And then of course we just obtained omega, the angular velocity. That was 3 radians per second. And when you multiply these values, you're going to get a linear velocity magnitude of 30 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C, which asks for the tangential acceleration. The tangential acceleration A sub t is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular acceleration. Now we haven't found this angular acceleration yet, but there is a nice straightforward way of finding the angular acceleration. We know that the angular acceleration is equal to the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. We recall that the angular velocity was equal to 0.60t. That was a result that we had found earlier in this problem. And when we compute the derivative of the angular velocity of 0 0.60 t with respect to time, we end up with just 0 0.60. And that unit would be in radians per second squared. So this is the value that we're going to be plugging in for alpha, the angular acceleration, and then of course we have the radius. So let's go ahead and calculate the tangential acceleration. So when we compute this, we end up with 6 meters per second squared. And that is the correct answer for part C, the tangential acceleration. Finally, the radial acceleration, which we can denote as a sub r, is going to equal the radius times the angular velocity squared. Once again, the radius is 10 meters, so we can plug that in. And then omega, the angular velocity, was found earlier to be 3 radians per second. And we just don't want to forget to square that value. So when we work that out, we're going to get 90 meters per second squared. And that will be the correct answer for the radial acceleration. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and subscribe also so that you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I will do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.